thank you for being here. You know, we got like, I, is this is this probably the first public event related to the to the Agile Twenty Reflect, or is it like the, the second or something like that? Depends how you define public. Um, yeah, we, we've had some, we've, we've streamed some in-house meetings, but this is this is probably the first public one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So so yeah, we got we got this thing called this this community thing going on um, called Agile Twenty Reflect, and. Uh, got a few of you here today. You know, we just thought like it would be a great opportunity to talk a little bit about what is it, what are we looking for. Um, conversation. We have some of the organizing committee trustees, different names. So we thought like, hey, you know, let's 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 get a, a warm autumn evening by the fire, yeah, and let's have a little bit of conversation about it. Um, who do we have from the from the organizing committee? I can see Scott is here. Scott um, is the chief pirate. Scott, say right here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Har. We also have. I can see Grace Johnson is joining us from Nigeria. What is Grace? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, Dov Sal from South Africa hasn't arrived yet. Or at least I don't see him. Yeah. And we also have Joseph Dean, who is part of the um, organizing team as well from London. Yeah. So, but we can all we can I mean obviously uh, as a as a campsite conversation or camp, whatever it's called fireside whatever one of the two um, we can we can all have a a, a conversation and share things idea I, I would like to start a little bit of a conversation with them and ask them what inspired you to do this What's, what was the inspiration for this yes we are gonna we're spending months looking at the stuff setting up a big event sending out you know something in february 2021 what inspired you who would like to go first craig Scott, you go first i'm looking you at you i'm looking at you per me <laughs> you were the second follower i was just the first person in the field mm -hmm. you were the second follower so what's the, what's the question we have taken months to set it up no why are we doing it why are we doing it? Well, it's 20 years, right? So, um, I mean, thinking back, you know, Jose took the initiative, I think, 10 years ago to, f to found the BCS Address Specialist Group, and the first meeting of it was looking back at 10 years. So this seems to be a 10-year a recurring thing, but uh, it's uh, changing every 10 years. There's more to celebrate now, isn't there? Yes, yes. I mean, think about business agility. That wasn't there. Think about all of the great movements that have came along in the last 20 years, like Women in IT, all, all of the movement of Agile into Africa and around the world. Um, yeah, so, so one of the things that really inspired me was you, Jose, right? Because I, I went to see Lean Agile Global, okay? And um, I was very taken by Dan Vacanti's Secret History of Kanban. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, how many other secret histories are out there? And, and then I realized that we actually edit our communities. So if you go to Agile Alliance, if you go to lots of places, there's a big committee and, there's, and everything gets edited. And your ability, your ability to talk at a conference around the world is completely hampered if you've never talked before. It's going to be really, really, really hard for you to get past the selection committee. Um, and realizing that we're all online, We've all got voices, we've all got something to add, we've all got variety, and the learning comes from the edge. It doesn't come from the center at times. Yeah. Um, why not collect all the stories from everybody and then put, record them and then make them available for free to everybody? And then we'll get this huge snapshot of where we are. And it's going to be part, part of the pirate thing, right? Is it's completely decentralized. Yeah. No one's got the right to say you can't say that. No one's got the right to say you're wrong or right. And we can actually get some of the newer voices out there. And, and the other thing I've found, and um, um, I don't know how to say this, but some of the older people in Agile are actually a bit jaded. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, it's harsh, harsh. Yeah. yeah, and they want to go off and... So if, if, if they were a rock and roll band, right, they want to go off and do their new jazz funk uh, album, and we want them to kind of do Sympathy for the Devil. <laughs> And and honestly, if you, you imagine that you're um, oh, what's, who's the guy that did uh, Road to Amarillo, right? Tony Christie, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time Tony Christie does a gig, right, they ask him about ask him to do Amarillo. Well, if you're an original a manifesto signer, every time you do a gig, you know, all everyone asks about is the manifesto signing. So, 
So let's go to the energy. Let's go to people like Mercy and Grace who have just passed their um, PSMs, who are really animated. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing I found was um, some of the people in the center are looking at Agile as a, a way of doing software development. And the rest of the world are looking at Agile as being a way to improve things. Yeah, governance. You know, Mercy, will, I'm going to pass over to Mercy now. Mercy will tell you she's she's hopeful that um, Agile can help with the governance in the horrible, horrible situation in Nigeria, at which point I'm passing over to Mercy. You're on mute. Thank you, Scott. I didn't know I was going to be called out, but hello, everyone. Hi, I say hello. Um, Craig, thank you for joining the live uh, broadcast. That was fun having you on board. Anyway, for me, Agile can change a lot of things. The Agile mindset, I think, is a very powerful thing. And we've started adopting in a lot of stuff. Many startups in Africa, for instance, are adopting the Agile way of working. And for you to succeed, it's us to be the people. You have to love people. You have to be willing to work with people. Um, but our government, I'll take your word, Scott, they're, they're really jaded. It's not just about agile, they're stuck, they can't move forward, they can forge ahead. And they've left us in a state of abysmal confusion and they are incapable of helping us navigate through the waters, of helping the young minds. And that's why the high level of uneducated young minds, and there's so much agile can do. I'll end with this. I recently just dabbled, just been very experimental in my approach with business. And I trained young children between six and 18 years old. And I recorded a beautiful success story. A nine-year-old graduated digital marketing on Google Garage, meaning that child watched 26 module of that course and passed it. The beauty of it, she didn't stop there. She has taken another course in coding. And this is a possibility, just the mindset of agility, what you're capable of doing. So startup in Africa are really adopting it. But you see at that top level that they're stuck, jaded. They want to listen to jazz. We want to go hip hop, you know, and change the narrative. They're just incapable of relating. I need to be transparent. I can't be a CEO, I can't be an executive director. You know, Agile breaks all that wall. So that's what I see and that's the thing. And that's my passion and my uh, love for what Agile 20 Reflect is doing. It's given me such an incredible opportunity to experiment a lot, to give back. High five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, all, right, all right, Jose, over to you. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that that's hugely, hugely inspirational. Thank you. Um, what do you mean over to me? I, 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 I wish. Do you, want to, do you want to meet our UK ambassador and our Ireland ambassadors, the people that are going to be creating all the events and hooking up with the meetups? Do you introduce want to introduce them. yourselves? Shane, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can do it. I was just looking around there to see who's on here. Um, yeah, I'm going to um represents the the festival in, in, in Ireland so it'd be the, the ambassador um I've been based largely in Edinburgh for, for the last few years um I'm currently back back in Ireland now with the the, the, the remote working uh, ability um and uh yeah I'm, I'm really excited about it um it took me a while to understand what it was about you know was it just this big reflection? Um, was it, uh, you know, was it a big retrospective, you know, what was it? And then w w when I realized it was a way to connect people across the world and start to break down silos within the, 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 the community and the, and, the, and the industry, that's, that's when I sort of had that real, it, it, it clicked for me, right? And then the other side of it, having this huge amount of information and, and data, um, from us sharing our understanding of what Agile means now um, and, and validating our understanding by sharing that and getting questions back and hearing what other people's views are. I, I just see a huge, huge potential in what that can lead to, right? Um, so so I'm, I'm hugely excited about it. Um, 
and uh, I'm, I'm just excited to be back in Ireland uh, at the moment um, and, and being able to be the Irish ambassador for this. So, yeah, Finn, Finn Golding was on today. He's going to help you introduce you yeah, to all of the, uh, the Dublin groups. Yeah. So I'd, I'd follow up with Finn. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, um, I've connected with him on LinkedIn, so I'm, I'm going to grab some time to, to catch up with him about that. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Was there, Aaron, was there, Aaron has there a one. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it was Erin. She only could only make it for ten minutes, so, so she's had to dash. Ah, a okay. Message in there, and she's from North London, and uh, she she'll be kind of what. Do you want to explain Grace the 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 kind of the 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 tiers of ambassadors we've got and why we've got them? Thank you, Scott. Good evening, everybody. Um, so we've got the Festival Ambassador Network. Um, is the circle where. Uh, every ambassador belongs to. And so we've got uh, the regional ambassadors, the country ambassadors, and the country sub country area ambassadors. Now, that section would be for countries that are really large and would want uh, to have ambassadors in sub, sub areas. Like for Nigeria, example, we have six geopolitical zones, but we have actually majorly the north and the south. And so if we want six more ambassadors under the country ambassador will have, but if we decide to go for two, from one from the north and one from the south, we'll have. We have, um, uh, the regions are basically divided based on uh, existing world regions, like Europe, Asia, Africa, um, and uh, North and South America, basically. We have, um, well, we, for now, we still have some vacancies, some regions have not had, uh, ha- don't have regional ambassadors as it is now. Like uh, regions like Eastern Europe, I think, yes. Eastern Europe, we have one for Western Europe. We have um, Southern Europe. Um, I, think, I think Southern Europe's on as well tonight. You- yes, 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 thank you. Hello yes, there. you did. <laughs> yeah, we have Jack for Northern Europe. We have um, Mike. Mike Lieber for Western Europe and so many others, but we, Eastern Europe is still vacant. So if there's anybody here that thinks he can take up the challenge for Eastern Europe, you're more than welcome. The application forms are still on the web at www.agereflect.org. So Grace, what, what, does, what does an ambassador do, a festival ambassador do? Well, the festival ambassador is there to coordinate but it's not there to serve as a bottleneck. So we're really Mm self-organizing. So the regional ambassador is there to work with country ambassadors. The country ambassador is there to organize events from his country. So basically that's what uh, the ambassadors do. Events, you can come up with ideas on the website. We have um, sections where you, you can basically propose for events and you mustn't go through your country or your regional ambassador to propose an event. You can sh- straight up go to the website and sign up and um, propose an event, and an event, a pro- make a proposal for an event. The form is there, so it's really very easy. Just fill up and click submit, that's all, basically. And um, the events can be around, probably talk around Agile, Agile games, it could be around, but basically we really want it to be grassroots and it can be in local languages. So we're encouraging I think being grassroots and really local is really driving home with some of our ambassadors, especially in Asia, when you tell them you can actually do events in your language. And they're like, really? Yes. You know, for those that have meetups, talk to your meetups, come together. It's, it's just a way to connect and probably do an agile evangelism for areas like Africa that is really emerging in agile, some areas in Asia as well. But some areas in Asia, like I'm finding out recently, are really doing spectacular things in agile. It will surprise you what is happening in Nepal, in Bangladesh. It will blow your mind, really. <laughs> I mm-hmm. think they are going way ahead of Africa. <laughs> well, that's commendable. That's good. Uh, so, I hope yeah. we pick up the pace. It's amazing, one the, Grace. Amazing, Grace. It's, yeah. Yeah. One, one, one of the most inspired use of Agile that I've heard in all these years is uh, Kuber Shirazi, a, a guy based in the UK. But he's been using agility in Pakistan to actually help people move away from potential, you know, radicalization, support. Wow. 
I mean, if, if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is inspiring, you know, wow. actually helping wow. people change their lives through agility. I hope he does a talk. I hope he uh, we, we, should, we should try to get Kuber. Yeah. We'll yes, please. Do. If there's a way you can connect with her, we have a Pakistani ambassador already. And I think she's really popular in Pakistan, so they could work uh, together. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, if people if people want to either participate as a participant, how do they find events, or if they want to propose events, how do they do it? Uh, there's uh, a section the on website. the website. Yeah, yeah. There's a form, ready-made so, form, very easy. Just fill in the I, form and click submit. Yeah. So the the website is agile20reflect.org. Yeah? yeah. Cool. Awesome. Let me ask a question. I'm going to ask a question to Yusuf, and then we will we'll open more questions. But Yusuf. Let's imagine that is the 1st of March already, yeah? Mm. 1st of March, 2021. That feels like probably a decade away. It's not, it's just a few months away. Um, what would you like to have happened during the month? Uh, okay, so um, let me, uh, let, me uh, let me go back a little bit first. So this is 10 years since, this is 10 years since your anniversary first. So just, I was just literally looking through my notes from 10 years ago, what I was doing. And I was running a, a 70, team, 70 man agile program, globally, globally thing. We were trying to figure out how we could scale Scrum to do it. And we were having problems. We couldn't quite understand how we were going to do it. We had people in Australia who didn't even know what Scrum was and all this sorts of stuff. I just literally in the last few months, and it's taken us so long because we're all agilists. So we just don't agree with each other. To get to this point that we've actually understood that there are people out there around the world who understand lots of things that we don't understand. There's things out there that people are doing that are way beyond what we, we would even envisage 10 years ago, what we'd envisage three months ago. And I think on, on, when March comes around, I would honestly be sitting back and having a whiskey thinking, you know what? I've just learned so much stuff about the world that I didn't know. I've made so many good friends that I didn't know about. I've met, I've heard people talk about things I would never have imagined. The same way today, I wouldn't, I, if I, 10 years ago, if I look at myself today, I would never imagine what I've just done with Agile in the last year. And at the end of March, what I want to see is all of those same sort of things. I think mean, that's my hope. And I think the the fact that Scott's actually put this together and with his with his thoughts coming off what you did, and that everyone's just jumped in and said, "Look, this is important." It shows that there's a, there's a a desire for us to all connect. The way the world is at the moment, the way everything's going, there's a desire for that. And I think this is what the, the month of February will bring. And in March, we should all be sitting here going, "Yeah, we know a lot more people, and we've learned a lot more things than we knew before." Cool. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? I suppose just, just based on what, what you're saying there now, um, a, after March, how do we continue to keep this, you know, how do we continue to keep this energy going? So we're going to have this, this festival, this month-long festival. Um, it'd be great to keep those connections going over time. So I think this is one of the things that we've been thinking a lot about. Um, in no way do we want to be competing with the large agile organizations. That's not what we're here about. That's how the tribalism came around. That's how we've got all these different strands. So the question really is, as a community and as an event for the community, by the community, we ourselves can shape how we go forward. That's the key thing. It's what do we want to do and how do we want to connect, stay connected? Not a central organization. The, the, our job is really, I think Scott would agree, is to to release our normal and release this let it go and let's see how the community wants to come together and keep going i'll shut up and have a drink of tea now scott no i, I don't know it's, it's okay i mean this isn't about you know i mean again as i said about four times in meetings today it's not my decisions it's 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 our it's our whole group thing you know part of the part of the the energy of the ambassador network is that i'd actually like them to have some kind of decision making in this um there's a, there's a couple of things i've specifically done the trustees aren't great agilists with 20 years worth of experience they're agilists who are excited about agile yeah the ambassadors we haven't said you need to have 20 years experience in agile to be an, an, an agile ambassador what we've done is we've said if you want to be an ambassador right and you go and you're motivated and get excited now i predict you put all those excited people together and you give them permission to do anything they want it will be exciting <laughs> And we'll, proceed, 
we'll all get so excited. We'll all go do things. It, I, I think this is this is going to be like a um, like a collider that's going to come up with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ideas, and then people are going to find friends and partners and, and other things that they want to work with and then they're going to go off and do it and then maybe five years time everything when we when we when you're interviewing people right and you say when did you get the idea for this they'll say ah remember agile 20 festival well that's when we met <laughs> and that's why we've got a company now that kind of things yeah yeah I and mean, that would be an absolutely amazing legacy yeah it, yeah. it, it, when you're when you're talking, um, actually now before I say something, I, I got uh, Christina has the, the the raised hand. So Christina, yeah, please. hi. Uh, so I I kind of just heard about the festival yesterday, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't really know all of the details. But so I'm guessing so far the premise is that in February next year there's going to be maybe a week long or is it like a month long event, and is it that it's going to be I guess daily and different events that people can attend, hop into, or just make connections. How exactly is it going to work? Okay, can I do the can I do the two minute video live? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. What we're just what we're what we want to do, right, is we want around the world, lots of all the communities to get involved uh, with doing events and and running them locally. So that's the main thing, that the events are all run locally. We're not having a central schedule. Okay. What we will do instead is have a directory of all the events that are happening, and we're going to run them over the, the month of February. And over the month of February, you can look at that uh, directory, program directory, uh, and, you can, and you can pick what you want to go to. Have you ever been to like, the Edinburgh Festival? I wanted to, I haven't though. <laughs> When you go to the Edinburgh Festival, it's absolutely it's absolutely massive and it's absolutely manic, right? People are taking over churches, buildings, banks. I've been in a bank boardroom doing things, and and it's everything. It's from finger painting to children's disco to opera to um, comedy to the guy that rips paper off as he changes his kind of act. Everything's in it, and and what the festival does, they don't they don't actually look for um, like any kind of quality check. They just let everything happen and they let the audience pick what they want to go to. Um, so what? So, so the three ways that you can really take part is one, you can be in the audience. So you keep an eye on that. You register for information on the website. It's the first line of the first thing is register for the newsletter. Okay. And in it, you can pick the things that you're interested in. So you could be interested in maybe Kanban and you could be interested in Lean Agile, but you're not interested in SAFE. So that's great. So we're not going to message you anything to do with SAFE if you take, you know, if it's not one of your preferences. Nothing wrong with save. No, I'm just going to oh, say that. I'm currently doing save. Said. I haven't done my certification. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, next thing. Next thing on that. So that's audience. So the four ways of getting involved are audience, yeah, speak, host, promote. So audience, speak, host, promote. Okay. So audience, you look, you register, yeah, and then you look at the program. Okay. If you want to speak, Right, we've got a couple of ways to do it. One is you can host your own event to speak, or you can work with your organization to host an event. And we're more than happy for that. And you can talk about anything you want. You can talk about your pet project. You can talk about the best thing that happened to you in the last 20 years of Agile. You can talk, you can do, you can rerun your best talk ever, or you can hold a workshop, or you can get a panel debate. Our first panel debate, um, I'm gonna hand over to Sath in a little bit to talk about that because he's got the first item in the program. The other option is we've got a volunteer speaker database. And I, I think last time I checked, you weren't on it, Jose. We need to get that fixed. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this came from the ambassadors. So what the ambassadors said is we're more than happy to start new meetups and new groups all over the world. But where do we get our speakers from? So Grace suggested, asked me this. And I thought, well, why don't we just do a, a volunteer speaker database? Now, at the moment, we've got about 70 people in there, including Jeff Watts. Um, Diana Larson and others and all their contact details are with the ambassadors so if you want to put an event and you want to get a speaker off of the off of the uh, the volunteer speaker database okay you go to your ambassador and your your ambassador will link that up because one of the things we don't want to do is to get great speakers like Jose getting 60 ambassadors contacting them if you think about the business agility network who are going to advertise this for us they're in 94 countries we could have more than 94 ambassadors. So rather than Jose getting 94 requests to speak, and I'm sure he'd love to, but that's the whole of February done, right? <clears throat> what, we, 
we'll have a bit of a trading system between the ambassadors to make sure that the good speakers and the you know and, and all the range of speakers you know go around. You know who I'm most excited about about being on the list of voluntary speakers? Paula Stewart. You know why? She's never spoken before and she'd like to do a 20 minute lightning talk, right? That's bringing a new voice into the community. Um, I know her, I know her, I know what she does. So we've got two or three people who have never spoken before who are putting down and, and they want to do lightning talks. And that's great. Yeah. Um, other people like Jeff, they're happy to do um, panel talks and everything else. So they're there, they're a great resource. How many people, Jose, do you think we want on that, on, in that volunteer database? Knowing you, 10,000. A thousand. Have we had a thousand speakers? 2, 000. Yeah. Damn it. That's going to be one, great. One factor. <laughs> I, I, I got a message back from someone uh, yeah, that we know both from the Kanban world this morning um, who said mm. uh, they don't have the bandwidth for this. And I'm like, that's very interesting. Mm. <laughs> you know, Jeff's got the bandwidth for this. Jose's got the bandwidth for this. Alistair's got the bandwidth for this. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so the other one is promote, okay, and if you want to promote this, the, the, one of the easiest ways to do it is volunteer to be an ambassador. Now, even if your country's got an ambassador, still volunteer because you could be an, in an area space, yeah, because, um, and, and what the ambassadors will be doing is talking to companies and uh, to, to try and get events, talking to meetups, to try and get them to do anything, and, and you'll know how hard that is to try and um, talk to different meetups and, and get them interested um, as well. And, 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 and do that kind of local coordination. And during the festival, if there's any problem happening, then the local ambassador, the, the, the regional sub ambassador will fix it, yeah? Because we've all been there with conferences where thousands of people are trying to get in and there's a problem and there's a big panic and we're trying to fix it centrally. Well, well this is gonna be, you know, thousands of events and they're all gonna be, you know, supported and resilient locally. Okay, so what were the four things again? Was it the audience? Okay. <laughs> audience member, host. <laughs> audience, promote. speaker, promote. Yeah. host, promote. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. So which, um, are you gonna, so which are you going to do, Christina? Well, I'll be in the audience, and then I'll read through all of the details on the website, and then kind of approach Have you got anything that you'd like to speak? Is there anything that you'd like in the, the online forever archive of Agile? Well, I'm on, I'm just kind of starting my journey. So I'm kind of like in the beginning phases of going to all of the meetups where there's all of this information and I have a whole backlog of books to read and people to meet. And then I'm kind of trying to figure out how do you get that like elusive first, like agile <laughs> title, you know, like either scrum master or agile delivery manager. So I'm like all over the place at the minute. I'm like the new the newbie to the continuous improvement world. <laughs> How, how exciting does it feel? Well, it's super exciting. Yeah. yeah, no, it's super exciting because I, you know, basically no longer kind of limiting myself to just going, oh, I have to just do one thing. I can just keep on learning as much as I want to. Mm. So it's pretty cool at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still learning. Sorry, Yusef. So I just want to jump in on the, uh, Scott mentioned a point about archive and you mentioned about, about learning safe. So here's an interesting thing. So we know that the, uh, a lot of these big organizations are going to get involved in February with the SAFE are going to get involved, a few others are going to get involved. Mm -hmm. The archive that comes out of it is, is going to be almost themed in terms of the past, the present and the future. So the key thing, for, especially if you're new on this journey, um, mm -hmm. and even, I mean, I'll, I'll give an anecdote. I, two years ago, I was sick of the work I was doing. And I came to one of Jose's beginner's KMP1 classes. I mean, I've been doing Kanban for God knows how long. And I still came down and I just, I still learned stuff there that I hadn't, that I didn't learn. And I think this is one of the things that this archive for all of us, for old dogs like me, for new, new people like you, you'll find stuff in there that will allow you to actually go, actually, that's an interesting direction to go in. Or that's an interesting direction to go in. So even just as being an audience member is going to be more than rewarding enough for everyone. If you can promote and do the other things, that would also help as well. And it's going to be free. So and it's going to be we, free. <laughs> and we, well, the good we, thing is we, I have time, so... If we talk about this because this is very, very to me is very, very something that is very dear to me. Yeah, um, one of the one of the things that we need to do as well as a community generally is like get all these stories, all these stories about people discovering agile, our first steps. Um, one thing that we notice, I mean, for example, in the in the London community, is that at one point, all the meetups, all the talks are kind of like 
advanced people talking to advanced people. Where are the, hey, you're new to Agile sessions. Where are they? I am new in Agile. Let me share my story. All these things that perhaps a few years ago were more common, you know. Um, there is, there, there was, I remember a few years ago, like everybody had playing, played games like, you know, the, the, I don't know, the coin flipping game, the, the penny Very game. Right. And, and then we got fed up of it. And then no one has played it, played it in events for 20 years or for 10 years now. You know, um, sometimes we, we need to create, how do we create this, this, this momentum where people keep teaching each other, we keep discovering, we keep celebrating new discoveries. And it's not about someone that has been doing 20 years. Actually, people that have been doing Agile for 20 years, probably we don't remember mm. what Agile was when we started. So it's exciting to hear things. It's actually very refreshing for all of us to hear like what it is to discover Agile. And the age of Agile hasn't reached to us yet. I mean, um, we were talking years ago that, you know, agility really probably is still 10 or 20 years ago, true agility. When we, when we have people who have had careers working in Agile from the beginning. So, you know, we still have a long way to go. So anyway, that, that since, you know, that, that's something that should excite all of us and share these stories. This is the most excited I've seen you, Jose, in a long time. <laughs> anybody would like to say anybody has a question i mean I, look, stop 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 scott and me talking do like Please. christina ask, who would like to have a question and contribute tough job to stop scott any questions anyone two, two things i think we'd like to showcase one is jack's here northern european ambassador and second thing yeah. is saf's here and he's just done the first event so that'd be interesting Hello, so, guys. Sorry. Well, so, by so, nomination, sorry. Jack. <laughs> yeah, I just jumped in. Sorry, me. guys. Uh, I was quicker, quicker off the button there, Saf. Um, yeah, so sorry. I'm, I'm still I'm, digesting my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly why I was late. That and young, small children um, as the joys of being at home consistently. In life. Guys, I've just been listening in and it's been absolutely awesome to say. And, you know, I have to say, I'm sorry, I missed your name, whoever it was that said you've just joined the sort of agile Christina. journey. Christina, that's what we're looking for. And really, you know, in you know, Northern Europe, I think we've got lots of great experience. I've seen some of the speakers that have already signed up and some real great experience. Some of the best speakers that I've heard speak um, have already signed up. But you know what we're missing? We're missing the new people. We're missing the people that have never spoke before the people that really want to get involved and, you know, whether it be speaking, whether it be volunteering, linking up to the communities, you know, as you can see, there's lots of people from communities here and it's just great to see so many people want to get involved and feel free, reach out to myself, reach out to any one of the organizing team, you know, happy to coach and support anyone if you want to speak for the very first time and, and get you up to speed if that's what you want to do and tell that story, as Josie said so very well. Well said, Jack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Mercy and I just literally just spoke. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Sath. Sath Everybody Russell. knows Sath. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was, a, it was a great conversation in that it was an opportunity for me to remind myself how I came to get involved. So Scott and I talked about this some time ago, Craig, others, and but this is, for all of us, a tremendous opportunity to play our part in shaping what might ha happen after. And the reason I've chosen to do the event that I've chosen to do is for that very reason. So as Jack says, it's great to have sort of new people coming into the community, connecting, bringing sort of newer ideas. That's awesome. That's what we want. We want a mix of ideas. So when Mercy and I were talking, one of the points I was keen to reiterate was when I set up my event in the... You know, on the website, it's dead easy to do. I've talked about it on the on the interview. So, you know, if you get a chance, watch it. Kind of explains just how easy it is. And to Scott's point, you know, it's it was one of those, you know, dream it, plan it, do it things, you know. I had the idea. I thought of it. Loved it. I thought that's exactly what I want to do. That, that will play to the themes, you know, let's look forward. I want to look at the future. Um, and because I'm already kind of organising a meetup, I thought, who could I invite back to speak to that topic? Uh, I went through the past speakers, came up with some some names of people who I thought would be amazing at doing that. Um, and then I just reached out to them. They all said yes. And then I registered it. And, you know, people are signing up. We've got 50-odd people. But 
you can do anything you like. So, so, so that event, you know, um, what does the future of RGL look like? What's next? It's it's a panel discussion with Dan Vacanti, who many of us here know quite well. Um, who's his big mate? Uh, <laughs> I saw you two fighting on Twitter. Don't think I didn't notice. Is that is that is that the Pro Plus Kanban? <laughs> no, it's the one about fuel efficiency, Jose, wasn't it? Jose, Jose posted something quite opinionated, and Jose didn't like it. No, really? Was it about, <laughs> about, about flow efficiency. It was funny. I was laughing. Yeah. I, stayed out, I stayed out of it. So did Dan McCanty. Did you fail your pro Kanban exam, Jose? <laughs> so we've got Dan the can imagine, you can imagine the flow efficiency is not in the in the exam. <laughs> so we've got we've got Dan Vacanti speaking. Uh, we've invited back Joanna Rothman. So Joanna's yeah. always great. She's always really insightful. So she joined us early in the year from Boston. So she's making a return. And that time she spoke with Mark Kilby, but this time she she's on her own. And she's also one of the advisors. Uh, and she's also a patron. Uh, Tobias Mayer, I love his work. He did a, a, a meetup with us recently where he was talking about the now of work. So that was really awesome because our reality has changed. Um, so he's joining us and he, he did the People Scrum. I'm sure a lot of you have kind of... Um, there we go. There's uh, there's that. <laughs> Craig's found the tweet. <laughs> Very good, Craig. Um, Don Reinerson was in there as well, I think. And, um, so, so those three were all previous speakers, but, but I wanted, you know, a good balanced panel. I also wanted a gender balanced panel. Um, and I thought, who could I get? Who, you know, who, who's somebody that we, whose work we love, somebody whose books we've got, somebody whose name has been around a while and could be really insightful. And I reached out to Lisa Atkins and, and, and Lisa agreed to, to do it. And that's it. That's the panel. And they'll all be talking about what might come next. Whether we're sharing the thoughts, we'll be exploring those topics. Um, and Lisa's also just agreed to be a, a patron, that so that's hot off the presses. Yeah. I mentioned it. I mentioned it in my interview. That was an exclusive, Scott. So, yeah. that, so that's brilliant. So, so that, we've got this concept of patrons, and we, and we thought about it, and we thought we didn't want this just to be around about the um, the agile signatures. So, mm. we wanted people that were that uh, we wanted some people that were um, from the past, and some people from the current, and some people from the future, and. Uh, and we've got four patrons. We're going to go for 12. Uh, invites are out. Um, but the four patrons we've got at the moment are Alistair Coburn and uh, Lisa Atkins and uh, Joanna Rothman. So you, you've got half the patrons in your your discussion group. Um, and Ari, Ari Van Benicum. Um So Ari, Ari was the DSDM, uh, you know, um, contingent at, uh, at Snowbird. Um, so yeah, and we're going to have, yeah, th there's some, you know, there's some really exciting people and, and what we're, we're looking for the patrons to do is to amplify the event and, uh, and, uh, you know, to get our message to go further, but we're also getting a lot of support from, um, groups. So the business agility Institute, um, we're just going to send them a message tomorrow that they're going to put out to all their members about joining the festival. Uh, we're talking to agile Alliance on Saturday. Um, we're also talking, to, you know, we've also been talking to SAFE and uh, we've been talking to uh, Scrum.org and Scrum Alliance. So all of these groups are going to send the message out to get involved and all these groups are going to do events in the festival as well. So, so this is going to maybe be the first time we've all came together. So of course we're going to referee all these big fights as well, aren't we Scott? No, because this is the beauty of the internet. It's we're gonna. This is gonna be like channel television. There's nine. There could be like a hundred channels. You just you just flip channel. You don't you don't try and burn the station down. <laughs> oh my God, Scott! I think no, I think one thing that you said that is quite pivotal, which is the spirit of agility that create an enabling environment, allow people to express themselves, they will go crazy. I know you say I scare you all the time. I like to always emphasize that. I think just because you created an, an enabling environment for me to go purely crazy and um, push, 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 I've seen the kind of work, the uh, marketing plan that Julia came up with was incredible. You didn't have to like command and control. She did it on her own. The same with Miles. The kind of people that have volunteered for Agile 20 Reflect is really jaw dropping. And is and I can't remember the lady that was speaking. You're new. I'm new. So you can do it. 
I think it's an opportunity to speak and to learn to connect. And you have spoken here, just share your story. This is a good story to talk about. So that's my encouragement to anyone. Just join the, join the community, volunteer, and you'll be surprised the skills that you have and how that would help for the festival and explode it. I can assure you, this is one place that, I, I say Scott is very infectious in the best way possible. I had Speaking COVID in March. <laughs> <laughs> Not infectious Speaking that way. Him, I mean, I'm so grateful that I came in contact with you, Scott. I'm grateful for my friend that shared the link for me. And I, I mean, I've seen Grace, the amount of work. She's new to Agile, but she's incredible. I mean, I'm just so blown away by just the fact that Agile says create an enabling environment for people to work, they will thrive. And you really fulfill that. If there's nothing else, it's a win. So I want to say to anyone, if you're new, you have a story to tell. We want to hear it, okay? So join us. So what are the four things, Marcy? What? What are the four things? What are the four words? Attend. Attend. Volunteer. What? Attend. Attend. Speak. Speak. Host. Host. Ulo. Promote. Promote. Thank I can, you. I can, I, can, I can see I can see a Scott's background in in being an, a teacher or a preacher. <laughs> can I can I just jump in? I feel like so, in an exam. <laughs> just so. so so Mercy's point. It's really interesting. So just an anecdote from the last, mm -hmm. and again, it, it's taken us a few months to get ourselves going here. Um, about two weeks ago, we were on a with the volunteers group on our Slack channel, and we had Dave Snowden. Some of you may know him from the Canavan was on the channel that day. We had a guy called John Drew who was also doing some voluntary work. And in the middle of the session, John Drew said, I've got to go now, I'm DJing. And we were like, what? So he just put this channel link up to Twitch where he was running a 24 hour DJ festival for a music for children charity. So I found myself at 2 a.m. listening to techno music, <laughs> <laughs> just off the back of that one conversation. And I'm trying to answer Dave Snowden on one side, I'm listening to techno music on the other side and I'm writing up some papers that I had to write. So this is, if you want to volunteer or if you want to connect, even, it doesn't matter what level of experience you've got, this is the key thing. We're meeting some fantastic people and seeing things we never would have imagined. Absolutely. Hello everybody. And if I can just say that, I think one of the things that um, would be awesome is to actually use this festival, like everyone has said, to actually bring new people in. We need more people to come into this agile space. And that is what Mercy is doing in Nigeria. That is what a lot of us agilists are trying to do for Africa to say, look, we need more people to come into this space because of the benefit of the mindset. It, it's unbelievable. And um, that's why I came in last minute. Um, Mercy knows this already. It's been crazy for me. I thought I couldn't give it the time it deserved. But with all the you know, unrest going on in Nigeria right now, I thought, Mary, no, no, you, you have to lend your voice to this. I mean. This is what agility is all about. It's, it's human centered. And if all of this is happening back home and a festival like this is gonna happen and we can't even leverage that for governance, then something would be missing. And that's why I, I came on and I'll be liaising with, um, with uh, Mercy to see where I fit in because I'm not an ambassador, but I'm running an activity. Actually, Jack, Jack, you need to talk to Mary because I got her to actually sign up. Jack is the one that is in charge of Europe. So I think you need to have a conversation with Jack. Yes, yes I am in the UK. And this was why I had a quick conversation with Scott. I am in the UK. Yeah. But what we're doing is for Nigeria. We are, we are responding to what is happening right now. Okay, so you align with me then. I'm aligning with you. That's exactly okay. my point. Yeah. <laughs> there are, there are, there are two, two little stories that I, for me were, have always been inspirational. One is like, you go to these kind of events when we were in, doing this in person and meeting with people and you, you're having coffee with someone and there's people that have amazing stories to share amazing lovely but they 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 either don't think they can speak publicly or they don't dare because they never do it or they don't get given the chance so um a, a few years ago bcs uh, people like uh, uh who is who's here craig south myself we actually created something called fresh voices and it was entirely thought out of getting fresh voices in our community. 
I'm not saying young, I'm not saying, you know, it's fresh, new stories, new ideas. Yeah, things that will enrich our community with new experiences. So, you know, the festival can also be part of these fresh voices. And then look at the global reach that we have. You know, agility in Africa, agility in Asia, agility in Europe, agility in everywhere in the planet. I, I, used, to, I used to do work in, in, in Chile and, and people in the Chilean community were like, oh, you're so lucky to be in London where you have all these, you know, all these great voices, all these great experts talking about, all these great communities. We are here together, you know, we are virtually together. You know, the, the planet is our oyster now. So let's use this. It's a, it's a great opportunity to share, you know, and, and as you guys said before, you know, the, 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 the future, shape the future of what, you know, the agile community will be. Create a new legacy, continue okay. the legacy. And also we can pull new people in. We can pull politicians yes. in, we can pull business people in. You could, you could have a Nigerian panel, you know, of, of all the expats in the UK and everything else putting pressure, because it's probably easier to do it outside Nigeria than it is inside. If, can, if you- uh, just jump? Yeah. Sorry, Sorry Scott, just, just jump in there. So Mary, just to, just to your point, don't, um, don't underestimate the power of actually lots of people just getting involved. I'll, I'll give an example. Um, when Snowbird came around and those people signed that manifesto, no one could imagine where we'd be today at that point. And even in the last few months, I mean, when you talk about politicians and business people, I've been working with people in one of the biggest companies in the world. We haven't even mentioned the word agile, but we've got them to completely change globally. Okay. This sort of thing can start from a very small spark, a thousand people just turning up, five people turning up. You don't know where it'll end up. It's just actually getting involved and saying, look, we want to do this and we can change the world ourselves if you want to do it. Yes, and it's just about doing it one person at a time, you know. So, I mean, for example, what we're doing, if all we can get is, you know, a legislator to just even look at it, to say, you know what, I've never heard of this before. This is new to me. We would have achieved something. So I think, I mean, it's about having that belief that, you know what, one step at a time, but starting something, you know. So that, that's what we're hoping to do. We're coming together to say, you know what, this happened 20 years ago. They didn't know what was going to become of it. All they wanted to do was write, you know, develop better software. That was it. That was all they wanted to do. But look at where we are today. HR going agile, finance going agile. It's amazing. And most importantly for me, I mean, the one thing I love about being an agilist, it's not the money I earn, it's not anything else, but the fact that it is human centered. Because what I tell people before I got my certification, I've been agile all my life. So when people tell me, how long have you been doing agile? I'm like, practically forever. Because for me, it's about who we are. It's about the character. It's not about, you know, the, 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 the certifications. It's not about, you know, the job in itself. It's about who I am 24 seven, you know, and it's made me a much better person. I have impacted all the people's lives it's just amazing and because you know what you have benefited you just want to evangelize for it that's what we're doing you you can see the passion mercy comes with we, we most of us are like that because we, we we can see the benefit especially from where we're coming from you see so yeah um it's great and there's a long way to go yet <laughs> what one thing i'd I like to, to do an event <laughs> one, one, yeah one thing i'd like to add right I um I was thinking about patrons and uh, who to ask and who are the top level people in Agile. And I did a search and I came up with, a, well, there's a large company, starts with E, if we put a page out. Um, rounds with um, blurging. <laughs> um, and uh, if you go to their website and look at the top 20 people in Agile, right? They're all blinking men, <laughs> all of them. I want I want the the stars of this uh, this festival, right? Not just to be you know old white blokes that came up with a method, um, uh, you know. Although some of them could do with a retread. Um, Craig's always talking about uh, greedy. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so I think there's a lot of lot of stories missing. We can get we can get a lot of those out as well. But but wouldn't it be great if we actually got diverse uh, you know heroes coming out of this diverse. I mean, goodness me, we can upvote the videos and we can upvote the input and we can we can look at that. And I think the influencers coming out of this, yeah, might not be the influencers that who have came into it. I think we're at this generation point. Yeah. If anyone knows Tenacious D, I love the band. They wrote a song about uh 
Dio, uh, James Dio. And uh, it's interesting. Have a listen to that song. It's all about the passing of the torch. <laughs> I think we're at a passing of the torch moment. It's a, we need to be about the new generation going forward. Yeah. And, and look, this is a meetup, right? I got so stale about five years ago because every meetup I went to, the only thing that people wanted to ask was, should I use Post-its or Jira? <laughs> right? Listen to the conversation we've had tonight. Right? Mm. It's about governance. It's about HR. It's about companies. Right? Nobody's asked me tonight about whether or not they should use Post-its or Jira. What was, your, what, what was your answer? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> <laughs> But post it as long as, as long as they are yellow, yeah? No other color. Sorry. <laughs> that, that used to be oh. what one bank used to say. As so long as you tear them off properly so they don't curdle as well. Oh, don't start, really. <laughs> so you open, you open, you open the, the can of worms. <laughs> but I have to leave. I have a class um, in like two minutes. It's been fun meeting everyone. So thank you so much, Scott, for the opportunity. Thank you for infecting me with Agile 20 Reflect, okay? Bye-bye. Sam, -bye. thank you for being a phenomenal guest, yeah? And Jack, we're having our session next week. Yes, okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Mercy. Me too, Mercy. Take care. Okay, so any, any, anyone has any questions or any thoughts or any hopes for the, for the festival? Someone else that we haven't heard of. I would like to have new, new, fresh voices. There we are, literally. Um, I'd like to do it next time. <laughs> I'll be happy to. Hey, Ali. Okay, how are you doing? Um, I've got this talk that I want to do for doing. I've been planning to do it for a long time. This is about dyslexia and, and uh, agility. Um, so I'd love to do a talk about that. Um, so yes, you can do it. I'm put, you put it in the website. It's been agreed. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm dyslexic. Did you say dyslexia and I draw? So, so we had a we had a bit of a joke in the uh, the Slack group, right? Okay. And we worked okay. out that we worked out that quite a high proportion of agile coaches are dyslexic. Yeah, and and ADHD as well, obviously. Ali, Ali, tell us more about what you what, what you were saying. Come on, keep going. Well, basically, what I've got is um, um, I've been dyslexic. Well since I was born. <laughs> so 25% uh, of the population in UK uh, have some some form of dyslexia, uh, whether yeah. it's uh, numbers, whether it's spelling, whether it's speaking, there are different levels of dyslexia. So obviously not everybody, this is actually the challenging thing. The, the, the talk is about my experiences, but in reality, everybody suffers or has dyslexia in different ways. So uh, I just have to find a balance where I can be, uh, you know, so I can do a good job about dyslexia. But I think what I'm trying to do in the talk as well is about the tools, the techniques that I do, uh, that I use personally to, to actually blend in. Most people don't know I'm dyslexic unless, unless I tell them. Um, so uh, is it, we, we learn behaviors, we learn things to actually uh, to, to, to fit in with the rest of the world. So we hide our true selves. And also I think one of the other things is most important things is actually identifying a team member that's dyslexic. Um, so I can talk about that. There's, there are tests you can do. I only found out when I was 25 years old that I was dyslexic and that changed completely uh, how I do things. For example, I give an example with books. When I read books, I get really bored very quickly. Um, I know that could be and you know any reason it could be a boring book, but mm. it's uh, I find that over over time is actually I, my eyes get tired when I look at uh, black text with blue uh, with uh, uh, with um, what's it called uh, with white background white white background so I need uh, so I, I need a uh, turquoise color. Um, I add turquoise color filter thing on top of the books that I read. So it actually allows me to read much more comfortably and uh, it has improved uh, the amount of pages I can actually read and digest. Uh, so I find that to, to be really, you know, it worked for me, it was amazing, it changed my life. Uh, yeah. I read much more now. So, you know, those are the kind of things, techniques and things I'll, I'll, I'll like to obviously bring up and maybe, uh, help yeah. people see. And, and and this is this is an excellent topic again, um, Ali, and it would be fascinating. I mean, I remember a few years ago talking about how 
um, many times our own behaviors in agile community can be very um, neurotypical, as we call it. Yeah, and we forget about different. I, I always remember the photo of someone in another company, so I'm not going to say in the company, but someone who was extremely introverted. Yeah, and open space and agile spaces were extremely scary and, 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 and exhausting. So this person was usually used to hide, used to make like a wedge between two whiteboards and would sit behind trying to hide away from all these noisy, extroverted people. You think about what we, what we do many times. We, we, you know, we, we need to celebrate our own diversity and many times we don't even consider this. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, we bring made, more awareness and more stuff. Yeah. The world is made for extroverts. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And Depends on the country as well, but yes, you're right. Um, <laughs> that, but it's, it's, it's always good to obviously look at other options, other other ways people work, and and I found it uh, to be it's really helped me coach much better. With you know, as as I as I can identify, I can see things, I can see signs, and uh, as a coach, it's helped me both when I talk to people. Ali, awesome. can I just jump so, in? So, just to jump in on that so one of the things we are a human movement more than anything we're not we're not writing bits of paper and pushing it around your talk would be actually really valuable you should jump on the website register your talk and if you just jump on the slack channel we'll see if we can connect you up with the conversation that we were having with other people around dyslexia and agile and a lot of other things because i think this this is something that's really important that we should bring forward we are a human movement we need to address the human factors that are involved here well definitely be interested i mean i, I I've been meaning to do this talk for a long time, but I've just been so busy uh, doing with you know with COVID and stuff. And yeah, just, but this is the thing. I, normally, if I have to go there, it'd be difficult. But if I can do it online, that's perfect. You know, the, yeah. I think COVID, in a, in a way, has been a blessing for <laughs> for meetups and for things that I would have not been able to attend before. Now I can just go to them because all online mainly. Probably, oh, yeah. probably. Oh, yeah. Someone else? Another another fresh voice. I have muted Scott, so you can talk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now there's going to be silence. I'm going to do. A, we're going to do this silent standoff. You can always talk about Game of Thrones. Uh, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question of other people in the call? Can we use so, if you guys, if you guys. Um, Free choice. What would you like to hear about? And if it's free choice of what we'd like to hear about, why aren't you talking about it? Um, can I say something? Of course, Mary. I really would like to hear more about how um, we can use Agile to be much more to achieve more diversity and inclusion i really would like to to hear more of that more diversity and inclusion so that would be that would be the subject of a panel discussion perhaps yeah host it pull people in talk i mean this is the thing i think we're i think this is what we're fishing for here this is for the community by the community we want you guys to go this is what i want to hear about how can i organize this to get people along jose can come along we can get all sorts of people to come along to actually join these things. Yeah, along with what Mary was saying, I have been really interested <clears throat> in finding out how agile could be learning and something that's needed most in this world, and that is um, towards anti-racism and social justice work. I think, uh, you know, that's something that, um, you know, it can be very applicable and very needed. Just looking at the problems within that area. And those are, and those are global issues and historical. I, I'm front and center in everyone's mind at the moment. Yeah. I think for me, the diversity and inclusion is important as well as the political and social aspects as well as well as even just the things like you know we're reading surveys where agile isn't working let's maybe try and reflect and improve in those areas too like organizational culture there's, there's lots of things we could talk about in, in a general sense without saying yeah i want to hear about this one hear about that but just even diversity of thought you know a variety of ideas would be good and then we can pick mixes with this 
<laughs> if Craig, uh, Craig was involved in the early stage, but we did a lot of work around about, part of the reason, there's, there's a couple of reasons we went slow in setting this up. One was we almost had to sign an amnesty disagreement with everyone. So we've actually got some, is that an 80 page code of conduct? <laughs> That, that kind of boiled down to, um, you know, um, people people with perhaps history getting to a position where they could engage with each other. Um, Dave Snowden did a great um, uh, piece for us around about how to engage with people without, um, how to engage with people that you don't agree with. Yeah, because we've really lost that in this day and age. But we, we kind of, you know, we react, we emote, we... Um, um, you know, we, we kind of... Um, yeah, we live in echo chambers a lot of the time now. Yeah, we we'll yeah. cut people off. Um, so, so that was in... So these are things that are coming out of out of where we're at, is how to have this, um, this getting people together and getting uh, getting things together. Yeah. Um, what, it, what? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just... I'm honestly loving this meeting. Thank you, Jose, so much for setting it up. It's, it's really energised me. I was feeling quite tired today, but this has really, really energised me. Can, can I, I ask you ask you something? Actually, the people that have been more involved in this, uh, and, and hopefully that this is a fair question to you. Um, I I have loved. I mean, you just talk about the, the initial aspects of a of a of a festival, and I, I remember there was a little bit of like people trying to find what was the boundaries and the grounds and shaping it, and it has been amazing how you know seeing a little bit from 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 the distance, watching there, you know. Um, how how this thing has been a true example of like some you know, self organization very holocratic holocratic kind of process, um, which is inspiring. Honestly, it's quite inspiring. I, I if I had been trying to organize this, I wouldn't have done that because probably I'm more authoritarian than this. So it's called. <laughs> do, do you to, yeah. Do you want to explain holocratic uh, for some of the people that might not know the term? Um, we, we, without without probably giving it fair thing for me holographic is just like you know people are, are are coalescing together into volunteering what to do and taking different jobs and self -organ it's, a, it's, a, it's a very self-organizing um um attitude where people form groups and work together I, I, that's probably the the, the 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 simplest summary that i can do someone can do better i, I think the way the way i would think about it is that um decisions are decentralized, even though we have people who may be shouting a lot or who may be leading us a lot, but they don't actually make the decisions. Yeah. It's an it's a really interesting way of working in that we get Scott with his pirate and he always tells us, ah, da, 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 but actually he's not making the decisions. Other people are making the decisions. People are volunteering to do stuff and do it. And he's just telling us maybe like this, maybe like this. And we all go, no, go away. <laughs> that sort of thing. Exactly. And, and, and that's the beauty. Anyone could tell me to shut up. <laughs> So, so that that's that's one thing. Like you know, um, Scott has even been kind of like the inspirational leader of this group. You know, the, the chief pirate. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's credit to you as well for doing that. But then also for the community for helping shaping this. Yeah. Um, but if you go, if you if you start thinking back to the last uh, what is it, three months, four months now that you've been you've been promoted since the idea became embryonic. Yeah. Um, what's what are your business, your, your biggest lessons learned? So far, what what is the biggest you know surprise? Anything? Share with share it with us, please. Can we name names? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> I'll tag them in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one of the things that's actually been a, a huge surprise to me is by themselves, just by seeing other people getting involved in the enthusiasm, doubters have become believers. That's been, it's been astonishing seeing that happen before my eyes. Jeff Watts, yeah. Jeff Watts Example. initially said no. And then when he saw what we were doing, he said yes. And then you have the other side where people who you'd imagine would go, you know, we're going to do this for commercial reasons or we're going to do this. And, and they've just gone, no, it's for the community, by the community. We're getting involved. We're just going to jump in. It's this, these two extremes has been, has been just eye opening and shows something in the community that I didn't, hadn't quite appreciated before. Great. My, can, oh, I give, can I give mine? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. A lot of people get involved and they don't seem to be able to work with people, especially coaches. So coaches spend a lot of time working with people and getting them how to work with each other. Right. And then you put them in a team and they go, 
there's no there's no communication there's no discussion and and it's almost like maybe their model is consulting rather than doing so um the, the wardley doctrine is something that craig shared and i loved it and uh and what it says is be action biased distribute the decision making yeah um, and try and use um, existing things rather than developing new things so I've been, I've been trying to think about the Wardley doctrine all the way through this uh, but that's really surprised me people look up on on board really enthusiastic and you say well what do you want us to do I said well here's a here's a puzzle form a circle and go and look at it and then you find like yeah but what do I do it's like well self-organize and it's like well how do we do that and it's like you're an agile coach. <laughs> <laughs> what is interesting, Scott, is um, I, I've probably experiencing the, the the polar opposite of that. I don't know if that would make sense. So uh, recently, we've got quite a we had a small group of coaches, and then we grew our group to about ten, eight or ten coaches. Um, and we have slightly the polar opposite kind of experience of that, where. Um, when we get the group of coaches together to kind of plan something, you have almost the problem where everybody's so used to facilitating and not to actually participate in that. And you almost feel like then to do the opposite of what you usually have to do, where you go, okay, right, now I'll keep quiet, sit down. Instead of, um, if you have everybody that has that um, facilitative nature and have decision-making happening by, um, uh, oh, I'm looking for the term now, um, Kind of like, like by group brainstorming, it, it takes a lot longer. So it's, it's not the case that everybody doesn't participate, but everybody wants to participate like they're facilitating everybody else, mm. um, which is quite interesting, but it's also um, could slow things down because it feels almost like a bit of a, a panel committee um, type of slowdown. I wouldn't say type of decisions itself. So yeah. Good. Uh, Good point, and I do I do recognise some of that. That does yeah. echo. Um, one of the things I did was we've got quite a lot of uh, very senior people got involved initially, and I kept having to message them to say stop teaching. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other thing you have to also at that point think about is um, I, I used the expression yesterday. We've got to start eating our own dog food. Um, mm. We were working about um, we were working on introducing the concepts of flow to quite a large group amount of new large amount of teams. Um, we're obviously going to start small, small, got a small amount of teams identified, and then eventually try and you know get it out to 100, 160 squads. So um, and then what what we realised is that we didn't organise ourselves the same way we kind of coach other people to organise themselves. So basics, you know. Um, do we have a prioritized list that we look and we discuss and, and we refine and understand <laughs> um, and we have constant, you know, we, we get together and we synchronize and we update each other and, you know, to do all of that, we coach people on it, but when we wanted to kind of get an idea out there, we didn't apply the same to that. So we, we, we caught ourselves out, um, but it is strange because of a bunch of coaches together. You're used to coaching people on it, and you, you forget you need to turn inwards and go and mm -hmm. dog. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, on Tuesday we had our trustees meeting, and yeah. Scott's laughing because I had to call him up beforehand to tell him off and say, right, you're not talking. I'm going to organise us. We're going to get Kanban boards up, and we're going to put a list of prioritised stuff we've got to do. And I had to, I didn't have to persuade him for long, but uh, even you know, 20 years I've got in this in agile, and even even all of us, we still we still make the same fundamental mistakes. <laughs> It's human nature. We're so enthusiastic. We want to do it. Yeah. We, we always need to step back and think about these sorts of things. I've, I've put some pictures in the chat. These are ones that Stuart Young's done. Uh, I'm just trying to, we're, we're going to put the different principles out. We've got nine principles of what we're working on. Because um, we found that we thought the pictures might help and around the world um, and, and, and they tell the story. So I'm actually loving all, I mean, again, Stuart just came on board to help with that. Um, just back to your question, um, Jose, one thing that really surprised me is the opposite of some of the people not doing stuff is the amount of people that have just volunteered to do things like Mercy, um, like Grace. So what Grace has kind of done is set up the equivalent of the US State Department in, uh, in like about three days whilst yeah. working, learning and looking after our kids. Uh, <laughs> Grace, I mean, are you there still? Yeah. 
I'm still here. <laughs> you, you've done an amazing job. You just, but you came out of nowhere and you've just organized it. You've worked with uh, Krishid um, and, uh, you know, you work closely there. Yes. And, and you've just done this amazing thing. I couldn't have asked, I couldn't have put a job advert out for you. And you just, I mean, how, how did you even find out about us? What's the story there? Oh, wow. The story is uh, it's a funny one. Uh, I was in a class, an Agile class. Uh, I've been taking Agile classes since um, August. The lockdown got me searching for more knowledge. So I, I stumbled more on Agile, Agile stuff. Scrum, I did a Udemy class, and then I signed up for a class Mercy is um, doing in Nigeria. She's really doing great things back here in Nigeria, pushing Agile. Uh, it's a three months course, um, Agile, GDPR, and so many more. And so she brought up this slide. Um, she said she got it from somebody in the US. And um, so she just flicked through and said it was a volunteering um, position and all of that. And it was really probably maybe 30 seconds and that was it. So I went back to the recordings, thank God the recordings for the class. Tried zooming in because it was really tiny and I saw Agile 20 Reflect and then I went on Google, I searched, and then I came across this website. It was really like I, like I said to you yesterday, it was really not something fancy and it wasn't really attractive. And I was like, wow, this is this is supposed to be a global, <laughs> a global event and this website is still not really organized, but anyways, <laughs> I still went. <laughs> That's funny, right? I went and I applied, and um, I think. <laughs> and now you're writing the website. <laughs> yes, you know, the first thing I usually do when I go online is look at the website and see if it's really something that will keep uh, that really catches my attention. If it doesn't really catch my catch my attention, I I just close and go somewhere else. And so, but this time I decided I flipped through the slides again. I, you, I, okay, I saw a video of you, I think with your pirate hat, and it was really funny and interesting and all of that, and I decided to apply. I sent in a letter, and uh, by the, I, I actually um, added my LinkedIn page, and I think you went through it because I got a notification, and I, I, I think you, you replied and added me to the Slack page, and that was how it started. And then the next day, we had a meeting <laughs> that turned to... Uh, <laughs> A recorded video. <laughs> that was basically my that was basically my story. Anyways, I transitioned to Agile this year, and it's really been. I've been in project management all my working life. Um, I love projects. I love um, construction. I love housing and all of that. But I felt it was really a controlling environment. It didn't really allow you to express yourself, and so I wanted more. And basically, since from my undergraduate days, I've actually been doing my thesis. My thesis for my undergraduate and master's was basically on collaboration. And I never knew I was actually driving myself into Agile. <laughs> so, it's really funny. <laughs> but it's really been worth it. I, I didn't do the work on the ambassador's page alone. I've, I've got great hands, great help. People like Agbar, they've really got great ideas. Simon, you, you're always there when I'm, you know. <laughs> it's really fun. Everybody I've been supporting to bring out stuff, the marketing is always there to push it, and it's, it's really fun, seriously. It's my best time this year, having having the, the best time of my life, seriously. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, we got we got a few minutes left, so um, before we 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 kind of like give our goodbyes to to all of you and to people that are going to be watching the video. Um, I just wanted to say, um, first of all, I thanks everyone for being part of this session, for all your contributions and everything. Um, you know, um, it's been great. It's inspiring. I hope that come February we have lots of great events from all sorts of people, all sorts of shapes and formats. You know, talks, workshops, you know, conversations like this, informal conversations like this, conferences you know, VIP events, whatever it is, you know, how we have lots of things and, and basically start booking your holidays for the whole of February. Yeah, yeah. February is going to be the new August. So um, I hope I hope like um, everybody's finding this inspiring. And thanks for joining this Lineage London event, you know, join the Meta group. Um, we'll see what we put the video. Um, we'll, we'll probably have to fight where we put the video. <laughs> but anyway, so it's been great. And I just want to thank everybody else. Um, and as we are finishing, I would like to hear just like, you know, maybe some, some final thoughts from, from anyone here in this group. So, <clears throat> my, yeah. Um, I mean, 
Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys, for arranging all of this. Um, my brain's kind of warmed up um, on a question asked earlier on kind of things you'd like to see. So I'm hoping it's not too late to put it in now, maybe just topics to consider for the future. Um, <clears throat> for me, Agile is all about learning. I heard a really good phrase recently that I'm a learning facilitator, and I really like that. Um, <clears throat> and it's really about learning. I'm wondering what is being done around the world that other people know about um, Agile within schools, school education itself. So that would be a topic that's really interesting because if we're all about learning and helping other people learn, then you know how about getting that into the younger ages? Um, the, the other side is distributed. We're all living in a world right now where we're all kind of distributed all the time, although we're co-located and distributed at the same time. So more learning from other people's experiences. I'm pretty sure there's a lot we can learn from that um in that space because everybody's been doing it so um and then the third one is um something i've been heavily involved with the last year and a half or so is multidisciplinary leadership teams so talking about your directors and managing directors having kanban boards and planning their work using cards um something i've been involved with but i want to hear more about that from other spaces because there's a lot of learning that they and everybody else can get from each other in that space so that's what I wanted to add in, what I'd like to see, um, or maybe get involved with. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully it'll be on the site. I've just opened it up to see how we can get involved. I'll just put the link for your proposer activity in the chat. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Cornelius. thanks for having this event, guys. I would, thanks for having this event. It's really nice to kind of hear what's been going on. And it's actually made me kind of excited about, you know, working with like colleagues. And I think what happens as well when you're just starting, you mentioned it, Jose, that you go to tons and tons and tons of meetups, and then you kind of hear just lots and lots of people talking and making recommendations, and then you kind of forget that how Agile started was were people working together and oh. learning and like developing their skills. So you kind of have a lot of newbies where we keep on going to the meetups and not necessarily kind of going, just connect with other newbies and work through it as well. So it's really kind of exciting to kind of have this convo and go, yeah, I probably should be doing more. Excellent. Can, I, can I just can I just tie uh, those two things, tie those two conversations together? Sorry. Christina Cornelius, the principles that you learn at the very beginning, the very basics, is what we use to transform global companies. There's no difference. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And we have John, John um, with a raised hand. So please, John. John, you're muted. I don't know. He says raise hand. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. I'm an agile enthusiast as well. I'm fairly new, very new as well. I'm based in London. And um, well, I'm basically here to learn, learn, unlearn, and learn. So that's really my motto. Is, yeah, is, is Shane still here? Is yeah. He? Yeah, yeah I'm still here. Shane recently did a great talk at NatWest. Um, around about, so Shane's involved in the heart of Agile, and the heart of Agile has a concept, which is Shu Hari, which is Shu is you start very small, Mm -hmm. uh, R is your kind of intermediate, um, you know, um, Re is, you, you know, a lot, but the entry point doesn't have to be Shu. Yeah, no. it can actually just be trying to understand the essence. And I'm going to hand over to Shane for you to explain uh, Kokoro. Yeah, K Kokoro um, is, uh, it, it means essence or hearts in, in Japanese and, you know, like all traditional samurais used to use this um, and, and their sort of, their skill or their, their capability acquisition. Um, and what Scott was sort of alluding to is that Shu Hari thing is, you know, Shu is where you, you, you sort of follow the way, you follow a process um, and then you, you sort of reach the roof, the, the limit that that can, the, the, you reach the limit of, say for example, Scrum. So you're like, okay, what else can I learn? So you, you'll acquire something like Kanban. And you move into how we start to break break the rules. And then Re's when you sort of, you're like Neo from the Matrix or 
you're like um you know yoda you're just it, it just you don't know why you're doing these things but you're able to just draw from all all the knowledge and the skills that you've acquired and often when you speak to re-level practitioners they'll say it depends you know when you ask them why, why did you do that or how should i do this they'll say it, it depends um you know the, the force is strong within you you know you know find your own way or um and it'll never ne 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 never be the same um approach that they'll take to a problem it can be quite frustrating sometimes when, you, when you're new to learning but kokoro is when you you, you reach the level of mastery where you, you recognize that the basics is really important and uh, and mastering the basics will allow you to progress through that sort of that, that mastery and skill acquisition uh, acquisition so the heart of agile really boils agile down to that the basics where it's collaborate deliver reflect improve and if we just focus on the basics um then the rest you know that'll come naturally and if you struggle with something always come back to the basics so that that's in essence what kokoro is and the best way they sort of related to something um is the mr Miyagi. so the wax on wax off wax on wax off you know or, or the new mr Miyagi, where it's you know pull off the coats pick up the coats um, we just, you really master the basics and they become so ingrained that it makes everything else, uh, much easier. So that, that, that's the coke rule, um, idea or. Yeah. So a lot of the instincts, a lot of the newer people have got, yeah. If you just do the basics, you're probably, mm. you're probably doing it right. Even though you think you won't, I, I'm going to do a talk on imposter syndrome and that's where you feel that you're not, you don't know enough to make decisions and things. But you probably actually do. So, so here's a here's a suggestion I'm throwing out there. Why don't you host a debate about agile where everyone's only going to be under six months as a practitioner? That's I would watch that. That's mm -hmm. I would watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your story. Yeah. Tell your story. Explain what it means to you. Try and get to the essence of it rather than getting caught up in the methods because we're. Half the arguments in the agile world is all about the methods. It's not about the mm. it's not about the basics. I, I would so, I would take that one stage further, and I'd say we force all the senior re practitioners to come and listen as an audience to that debate. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Me, it's always about the principles. It's always about the principles. And if yeah. I can tell you what kokoro means in in Yoruba in Nigeria, it means ants, and how. You know, apt is that for this conversation because ants are collaborators, isn't it? Yes, I love it. Intelligent and build, and builders. And very, intelligent. very intelligent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of associate with what you said before. Or I do 100% associate with that. Um, I've always said that I can learn something from somebody who's been doing it for a day um, as much as you can for somebody who's been doing it for 20 years. Mm. And yeah. So, and this so is the message of the conference. Yeah, this needs to be the message of the conference. It's not, it's not come and see the, uh, you know, the, the guru on the stage. No, it's come and it's come and share your experience. No, it's never, it's, never stop being curious. Never stop yeah. learning. It, it's not about the time. It's not about how long. And one thing I find about Agile, because I, I also have an ecosystem of um, a, a growing um, um, Agilist here in the UK, Canada, and America. What I find is it's about getting it. It's not how long. You get in there and you get it. I mean, look at Mercy, look at Grace, look at um, Joanne. It's not about how long. It's having the, the, just the, the passion for it, the hunger for it, and aligning, aligning with the values and principles. For me, it's not how well you can run, um, uh, uh, facilitate a meeting and all of that. It is how well you align with the values and principles. How you leave it, how you come across. That's it for me. Excellent. Um, I, I, you know, we could continue going on for a long time, but it's six thirty. We are good at trying to not keep the time boxes. Not that we do time boxes. This is flow. <laughs> so um, we're gonna we're gonna stop the video now. Um, if people want to stay, we can continue. But let's stop the video and say thank you to everybody for being here. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you. It's an absolute Thank you. And thank you, everyone.
it's been lovely to share ideas and hear all of you. So like, thank you. It's truly inspiring and you know, um, keep going. Yeah, great. Thank you for next year. Say a good bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.